I'm Peyton with Slice Engineering, and we are at the second annual Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival, one of the most exciting 3D printing expos in the country, where companies, makers, and enthusiasts gather from all over the world to see the latest in 3D printing technology. We are here in the Vision Miner booth, and today we're going to walk around the show and see if we can't find any of our partners who are building 3D printers here in the USA. We're going to get the inside scoop on their latest innovations, and we'll see what they've been up to. Let's see what's making waves at the 2024 Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival. We're in the Lulz Bot booth, joined by John, and we are in front of the Galaxy series of tool heads that feature Bontech and Slice products on them. Thanks for having me in your booth, John. Can you walk me through the extruders and tell me a little bit about y'all's booth setup this year? Certainly. No, uh, working with Slice has been really great. One of the things that uh, we've been able to do with the Galaxy series is just simplify our whole tool head line. Uh, for a while, the Lulz Bots have been uh, able to take a, a few different tool heads. It's one of the ways that we uh, cut down on obsolescence. So you buy your, your core, your main uh, Lulz Bot frame, and then as new technology comes out, stuff from Slice and Bontech, uh, you're able to keep that machine up to date without yeah. having to go buy a whole new machine. But uh, we're very excited to show our, our Galaxy series here. Though there's five tool heads, realistically, there's only really three different ones. The difference here is we have 175 and we have 285 uh, for your feedstock. So when it comes down to the actual tool heads themselves, uh, probably 80, 90% of what we expect our, our users to buy and use is this uh, Meteor. So Galaxy Series, but the Meteor tool head, you can get it in 285 or 175. Mm -hmm. This is gonna be 80% of general use. Comes with a 0.5 nozzle. Uh, we do nozzle kits as well, so you can do 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. We'll jump to, uh, I believe, 0.8 is what we got on it. So that, that's gonna cover a lot of printing use. For our Pro Series, we also make a dual extruder. Uh, this nice. is actually linear actuating, so that second nozzle is always gonna get up out of the way. Uh, but this is called the Twin Nebula. So you've got your Meteor, your Twin Nebula, and then another fun uh, tool head we make is the Asteroid. So this is uh, utilizing the Slice Magnum Plus. Yeah. So we've got multiple heater cartridges. This is going to be a, a Gamma Master nozzle 1.2 from the factory. And then we go all the way up to a 2.4 millimeter nice. nozzle yeah. to put down just fat beads of plastic. The quality of the Mosquito uh, components on the bottom has been really, really good for us there. Uh, we love that we're able to do the uh, nozzle swaps, essentially one-handed, yeah. using the torque tool. Uh, our customers like that a lot. Uh, the coupling with the Bontech LGX on top has mm -hmm. finally made it easy for people to do repeatable tensioning. Yeah. You know, for school, library, Fortune 500, and uh, you're running one of these machines and you're having to train in somebody, you can now just tell them, load the filament, set it to one click. Yeah. And they got it. Another you know question I have, how, how have you seen the performance of these hot ends be in your own use uh, on the machines. I assume you guys are running these machines a lot and doing a lot of testing. Yeah, yeah. So we we run them for testing and, and new machine development. Uh, we also run them in our print farm. So okay, yeah. A ton of hours there. We've got 300 machines. Wow. Then we're yeah. going every day making more parts for our machines and doing some contract manufacturing. Cool. We've noticed that the service side of keeping tool heads running has really gone down. So these are awesome. these are. Really hassle-free tool heads. Cool. And then the last thing I want to ask about is I know y'all have a new uh, version of your printer that you're showing off, and we'll, we'll insert some B-roll of that so everyone can see it. Uh, can you tell me about the new uh, Lulzbot Mini yeah. that you have yeah. here? So after quite a few years, we have our next generation to the Mini lineup. Yeah. Uh, this is the Mini 3. It's a machine that is uh, clipper-based on the firmware side of things. So we're now a, a company that builds both uh, Marlin-based machines and Clipper-based machines. Uh, we saw kind of a cool area in the market where uh, this firmware could be uh, taken and uh, polished a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I guess uh, we focus a lot on 
uh, ease of use. Awesome. And then what do you see as being the primary use case and, and application for the Mini 3? Yeah, so we put a lot of thought into the Mini 3 and kind of the role it serves, what its purpose is. For help with that, we looked at really what did the Mini 1 do? What did yeah. the Mini 2 do? Who was buying these and, and why? A lot of our users try to get at least five years, if not uh, 20,000 continuous print hours on wow. the unit. Yeah. So when they're coming to Lulzbot, they're not necessarily looking for the new printer that they're going to buy this year because they're really into the hobby. They're looking for that tool that's yeah. part of their process. They're going to have it for a few years. Uh, let's say new technology comes out. They know that Lulzbot's not going to put them in a case where they're stuck with an obsolete unit. Yeah. So being able to charge, change out that core, that part of your printer with your extrusion system mm -hmm. uh, is really handy there. It works really well for us and I, I think we'll see a good reception and the same longevity as its two predecessors Yeah. Uh, when it comes to the Walls Bob line. Yeah, I love it. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it and I'm going to keep walking around and see what else the show has in store. Right now we are in the Oozbot booth. I'm joined by Gabe from Oozbot. Thanks for having me here. We've got an awesome display of printers that are all running slice hot ends. Tell me a little bit about Oozbot and these printers. These printers are designed for industrial use. They are very much created for the race of materials. ABS and up is how we like to say it, engineering grade yeah. filaments. They're actively heated to 85C. We're located in South Georgia and are coming. That's what we're really here. Uh, There's only a third time we've ever had the machines out in public. Uh, haven't lifted NDA with our customer base. Haven't even launched their website. But we are real, we are coming. We are just cautiously growing the business and we will be very much front and center here very soon. On all of these printers, we have, I can see we got a you know Bontech extruder. It's the LGX Pro. Or with the Metal Gears. We offer the Magnum Plus as well. We had really good luck with the Magnus to the point where we've really not had that much need for the Magnum Pluses. You can push so much filament through the Magnum so that that's just our standard go-to uh, yeah. hot end. Cool, so what has your experience been with slice hot ends on these printers? Uh, very good, very good. I mean, like I said, all we print and what we're printing today is a glass-filled ABS. Yep. I don't know of anything more abrasive than that glass stuff. We did step up to your new Gamma Master Gamma Gazzles. Master yeah. Gazzles, Gamma Master. We honestly had good luck with the others, but we stepped up to the Gamma Masters. I have a machine specifically that we were trying to kill. Uh, it has about 7,800 hours on it. I've pushed at least 40 spools through that uh, since you have provided me one of those. Uh, 42 kilogram spools through it. Wow, with, with no shines of any type of true wear or anything, so that's awesome. So obviously you're, you're gearing these towards production because you're doing print farms. Yes. What sort of customers are you seeing, if you can talk about it, what are the use cases that people are actually you know, using these for? We're still learning that. We're okay. still learning that. Uh, we've talked from everyone from injection molding companies that are willing to augment their business yeah. to government contracts, to automotive makers, to a company that makes airplane parts that wants to print in like a high temperature nylon. Cool. Um, that, that these do fit the bill for. So yes, we're still learning that. We're, we're very cautiously moving forward with production, but these are the finished machines and we're definitely pleased with the slice hot ends. Uh, and with Slice, you guys in particular, from the streeter down now, we've had zero problems with this extremely abrasive material. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That's great to hear. Cool. Well, thanks so much for showing me these machines. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I hope you have a great rest of your show. Sure, sure. Right now I'm in the Wuxin booth, joined by Isaac and William from the Wuxin team. 
and we're going to talk a little bit about what you guys do because uh, you guys have some sliced hot ends on your printers. So tell me a little bit about Wuxin, whichever of you wants to take it, uh, and then I'd love to dive into why you chose to use sliced hot ends. So. Yeah, so Waxen, we're a local Fort Collins, Colorado, uh, 3D printing manufacturer. Cool. We develop and assemble the WXR machine. And so this is a, a Cartesian or a bed slinger, the bed slayer. Nice. And uh, it's a Marlin based printer that runs with input shaper. And so one of our huge focuses in this unit was reliability and quality. And that's always been our, our top priority in what we do. And so that's a huge reason why we went with the Copperhead hot end from Slice Engineering because we needed something that could reach the temperatures that we wanted and also maintain like quality of flow and everything about that, the copperhead odd end from its price all the way down to the way that it looks just speaks to us. And that's like one of the big reasons why we went to it. And so we just wanted to support a U.S. company as well and integrating that into our product was, was top priority. Yeah, obviously you guys are making your printers here in the U.S., we're making our hot ends in the U.S. What informed that decision to make your printers here in the U.S.? Are there any, obviously there are challenges with that. Can you maybe talk a little bit about what goes into actually making a printer in the USA? Yeah, I could uh, talk a little bit about that. So we wanted to make uh, printers in the United States because we wanted to hopefully bring back some jobs in the yeah. economy. Uh, it's definitely a huge struggle though because everything is super expensive, but everything can be made in the United States. You just have to figure out how to automate as much as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. So the process is pretty straightforward. We have assemblers in the United States and we have an SOP that just defines the structure of how you put printers together and you kind of just, it's like building Legos, it's not too complicated. Yeah. You just have a torque driver and then you assemble the thing uh, following the instructions so it's not uh, too difficult. Cool. And then these machines, they are, I mean, they're printing really fast. They look really awesome. I mean. Obviously, you're using quality hardware. I'm going to say that from a biased approach. If you're using Slice hardware, then I assume you're using really awesome hardware all around. Who is this machine for? So this machine is tailored for new people that are just getting into 3D printing, designed to be an out-of-the-box solution. Mm -hmm. So it comes fully assembled. You pull it out, plug it in, it calibrates itself, and then it's ready to go. So it's designed to print and print and print and print reliably. And so this is like a no fuss, no upgrade needed. We still design it with like the rep wrap community in mind. Mm -hmm. So for those that still love to tinker and love to mod and do all that kind of stuff, like it's a perfect unit because it's already the best of the best. So instead of trying to get the functionality increased, now you're looking at, okay, how can I get creative and, yeah. and design something that either branches into like making it look cooler and yeah. like customizing it. And so we kind of took the step of like, oh, I needed to have linear guide rails and we like well we already got that and so yeah. it's like okay now how do you just make it go faster i guess and so yeah and we got the input shaper software with it so people that want to really push this kind of unit to the limit it's like this is a perfect machine for that awesome cool is there anything else that you guys would like to say about Wuxin or your you know your machine uh, or anything else before we wrap up our our time here that you feel like we haven't talked about uh, yeah, so the Wuxin WXR, uh, we're selling at retail right now for six forty nine ninety nine. Cool. And so the reason we're able to do this price point is because of all the support and the love that we received from uh, the local community. So we just want everybody to know that you know when we push this unit and we send these units out, that you know once you buy one, you're part of our our Wuxin community. It's like yeah, our customers are always top priority. Your satisfaction is the the utmost important. And uh, here at the Wuxin team, like, we're here to serve. Yeah. So if you got problems, you got issues, you got questions, it's like, we are the go-to for helping you get those solved. And apart from that, it's like, we just wanted to thank everybody that has supported us so far. We look forward to, like, bringing in more people into our community. And uh, we're excited to, that Slice Engineering is here. And we're proud yeah. to have your guys as hot in our unit. Awesome. Cool. And then if people want to find out more about the WXR or Wuxin, where can they find out more information? Yeah, so if you guys want to learn more about us or the company, uh, just go to wuxin3d.com and we'll answer any of your questions. Cool. In the description, we'll include links to the Wuxin website and information about the printer as well. Thank you guys both for your time. I'll try to shake both of your hands. Great. Thank you guys, and we'll keep going around the show. Awesome. Thank cool. you. Yeah, thanks.
Obviously, we didn't even begin to scratch the surface of all the awesome things happening here at the 2024 Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival, but we wanted to highlight three of our partners who are designing and assembling and manufacturing their printers here in the USA because we think that that's super awesome. We'll include links in the description below to all of these 3D printer manufacturers so you can learn more if you're interested in them. In the description, we've also got a link to a free guide that we've put together called Seven Things You Should Not Do With Your 3D Printer. In this guide, we've outlined the seven things you should not do and how to avoid them to make your 3D printing process better and more efficient to help save you time and money. We've got another video coming out soon about the Rocky Mountain Rip Rap Festival and our time in the Vision Miner booth and their awesome nano polymer adhesive. So like and subscribe to the channel if you're interested in seeing more content like that in the future. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to stay zesty. All right, guys, we're here at the Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival and I've been selected as a driver for this guy right here. Wish me luck. It just went straight right. Oh, I can't see it. Where is it? Where is it? Man, well, I tell you, we went hot off the line. We were winning, and then uh, it would not turn left. It just kept going right and uh, straight through the crowd. We almost took some people out, but I don't think there were any casualties, so it was a good race. <laughs> I'm happy.